Stay tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled are two Broadway stars. Miriam Larici, who performed in Luis Bravo's Forever Tango, and Saab Shimono, who acted in the original cast of MAME with Angela Lansbury. Dancer, artistic director, choreographer, Miriam Larici was born and raised in Buenos Aires, where she attended many schools, including that prestigious academy at the Teatro de Colón. She's danced all over the world, North and South America, Asia, and Europe. Miriam danced on Broadway, also in 42nd Street and Me and My Gal, and was in the film Mambo Kings. She's known as the world's leading lady of tango. Quite a title to carry, Miriam. Yes, a big responsibility. Yeah, what do you say when people go, oh, she's the lady of tango? Well, it's fun, it's nice, and uh, it gives me more strength to keep working and to keep preparing new stuff to give it to them. So what is tango? Tango is a feeling that you dance. It's a very uh, uh, deep uh, relationship between man and a woman dancing together. Okay, we talk about relationship, but um, you have to have some footwork with it. And what if you're taking a class and you don't have a relationship with that person? Well, that's the magic of tango. You don't know <laughs> the person, and then you get together in three minutes, you, got, you have a hug, embrace, dance, coordination, the tango finish, you go to your seat, and he goes to your seat. And that's, that's it. it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was, Because in Buenos Aires, there's a lot of tango schools, or a lot of tango clubs. Yeah, a lot of tango class, uh, clubs. Tango starts in the streets, so um, actually you don't need instruction for that. But now... You don't? After over, over all these years, now we have tango schools. But how did, what were they doing in the streets then? Because I, when I was in Buenos Aires yeah. in, in San Telmo, mm -hmm. they were just dancing in the street. They were dancing in the streets, But yeah. I'm sure it was choreographed now. Well, no, they improvise. They, they are do? spontaneous dancers. Yeah, the, the magic of tango is you can improvise. It doesn't have to be a choreography. So how do they do it? You have some codes. So when you go to the school or when you learn from somebody, they give you the codes, the rules. So you keep the rules and keeping that uh, basic steps, you can improvise many of this. Oh, so you do, because I know you teach. Yes. And what are some of the basic rules? Uh, for example, with embrace, the guy is always leading you in the back, in your back. He's keeping the position of the arms in the way that you know which is a step. So he's, he's leading lead. you? The guy is leading, yes. The man is uh, the macho in tango. And then <laughs> what does the woman do? She's following and she's taking off the, um, all the pauses to do the embellishments and trying both following the music. So are there certain poses? Is that it? There's, or you make your own poses. <laughs> you make your own poses too. You just follow the lead, and then both are following the music and making poses and keeping the rules. Yes. Mm -hmm. One of the d before we go on and talk about the costumes and all of that, we have a picture. We have a DVD of you doing the tango at the Boston Pops, which is a pretty fabulous place to be doing the tango. It's a big orchestra. Did you do it with the orchestra? Yeah, it was like 80 musicians in the back with the tango musicians in the front. Oh, and you had your tango We group? have our tango orchestra, yes, playing the bandoneon, which is the main instrument for the tango. But it was beautiful. It was a very great experience. So let's see, let's see you dancing on that.
Miriam, that was fabulous. Thank you. What Thank kind you. of, uh, you look like a gymnast though. Well, we, we were mixing that also acrobatic style with the traditional tango because it was for the big production of Forever Tango. That was from one of the, was like something from Forever Tango? Yes, yeah, one of the numbers of Forever Tango uh, together with the Boston Pops Orchestra. How do you train? Because you look like you either take yoga or ballet or... I did ballet. You need some technique to go on the stage to do the turns and the, the lift. And then um, I, I train every day, yeah, rehearsing every day. And, and what else do you do? Just, I mean, uh, concerning about uh, the dance getting and tango. In, getting in shape. Just uh, taking care of the food, I sleep well, re uh, stretching a lot. Do you stretch a lot? I stretch a lot, yes. And do you give tango classes or do you just get yourself in shape? I do tango classes too. I'll teach, yeah. And, and do you do that in a tango class? Yes, yeah. We give some, I do some exercise so they know what to do, how to be trained, and besides the tango steps. So, if traditional tango, let's talk about the costume. What does a woman wear? The, uh, it's very normal to have a skirt with high heels and a big open skirt on the right side. Uh, always on the right on side? On the right side, yes. And why is that? Because it works. The, the leg is always the right leg. is moving more, so we need to open on the right side. I see. And very sexy dresses. Mostly, uh, we use a lot of gel on the hair. The hair, the hair is back. It's also for the guys. The and guys always everybody use uses gel. Everybody, yes. Yeah, very traditional on tango. And then the shoes, very high heels. Very high heels. That's very also traditional for the tango. Do you uh, do you rehearse in the high heels, obviously? But when you're taking class, when you're doing stretching and exercise like that, do you use your shoes then? No, I try to go to the flat uh, shoes, just very comfortable, and then go to the high heels only for the dancing. There, uh, I saw this tango out of more. Yes. Adam Moore. Yes. And it was absolutely fabulous. But there was a guy out in front who had, I think, George's tango shoes in uh, Los Angeles. And the backs are covered and you have a strap across. Yes. We need that because you have a lot of footwork, so you need to be sure about the, the shoes. Does not have to fly? And what, <laughs> they don't have to fly mm, off? Yes. What about the men's shoes? They also have a little heel, and mostly they use charol, which is a shiny, very shiny material, very also traditional from Argentina. Well, what, the thing when I picked up one of those shoes, and it was it was like a ballet yes, slipper. Oh, very flexible, yes. But it yeah. doesn't look like that on the stage. It looks very um, it's kind formal. of the flamenco shoes with the metal inside, because the high heels need the support, but it has to be flexible at the same time because you need to move your foot. And what did the men wear? They wear suits. Uh, colors are uh, burgundy, black, blue, uh, mostly dark. Stripe? Sometimes, yeah. They're very traditional with the stripes. And the uh, black tie and, and the shoes, yeah. And the do you shoes. design those, um, some I of the dresses? I was designing some of the dresses, yeah. I love to design dresses. Uh, can they be flashy or not? They can be flashy, yes. Can yeah. they? I like the golden colors and silver. And so, so they have to be a stretch. Do any other countries dance the tango? Everybody dances the tango now. Now they do? Yes, but so you're, around the world. But Argentina is known for that. Yes, and it's born other, in Argentina. It's born in Argentina. Mm -hmm. The other South American companies, uh, countries we have what? Mambo and... and Salsa, Mambo, Salsa. yes. Cha -cha. But, cha. But, but you wouldn't say they're from those other countries. Tango. No, tango is from Argentina, yes. I see, I see, I see. Okay, so um, tell us what else they dance in Argentina. Well, they have a folklore, oh, Argen the Argentine folklore, which is very traditional uh, dance, but the tango is more like the city I dance. See. Well, what is the folklorica? What do they, how do they dance that? They dance, they don't dance together, they dance open uh -huh. position, and the costume is very different. It's more like a white colors and big skirts. It's very different than tango. And what do they call that? Folklore. Folklore. But folklore. it's the gauchos do it. The gauchos, eh? That's right. the folklore, yeah. yeah. The gauchos. All right. When, when you go to a tango show, because I went to a lot of tango shows in Buenos Aires, there's certain things that are part of the show. Yes. Tell us what has to be a part of that show. It have to be um, the orchestra. They and tell us how many, like four people, eight people? It can be uh, four, five, or 11. Up to 11. And what do they use? They use the bandoneon. The bandoneon is a main instrument. It's Say like it again. a little bandoneon. Okay, bandoneon. It's a little, it's a little accordion. Actually, it's a Sherman instrument. 
brought to Argentina in the last century. I see. So that's the sound. That's a, the, the melodic sound, the melancholic sound. And then what the else do sound. they use? And then we use a violin, piano, guitar, viola, and the bass. And how many bandolins? It can be one or four in one orchestra. Uh huh. Yeah. That's very important to have bandoneon for you the need tango. That. If you only have that alone, you can do it, right? Yes. Okay. You have one bandoneon, you can dance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then what else do you need for a show? And then uh, for a show, we need to take care of all the lights. The lights are very special. They have to be very dramatic. The color of the costumes, the, the shoes have to be right tango shoes. You, you can wear uh, flat shoes. You have to be high heels. And then you usually have a singer? We have a singer in Tango Adamor, which was, was very, very good because she also sings some uh, English words. So it was good for the people. Right. And then, so I just remember there was like a formula. There was a singer, there was dancing, there were two or three couples, several yes. pairs of couples. Yes, and then the musicians. Yeah, you can have, oh, in Argentina, mostly they have three couples in one show. In one show. Here we have uh, six couples, two all together. In Tango Adamor. In, in Tango Adamor, there were two guys dancing together. Yeah, they they look like machinery. They're brothers. They are <laughs> great. Yeah, there's a new formula they're using. Um, they're a little comedian also, and, but they, are, they have a lot of precision. And you can see them dancing very, very nice, beautiful. And before we leave, I know you created a Los Angeles Tango Festival. The festival, it was a weekend of classes from morning until afternoon. Classes? Classes, yes, just to learn from all the levels, beginners, intermediate, and advanced, and milongas, which is a social dancing at every night. And milonga is where you all go together at, into milongas, a... Milongas, you go there, you sit, somebody's taking you to a dance floor, you dance for three minutes, and then you sit. <laughs> <laughs> so you did that. Are you going to continue that in Los yeah, Angeles? Yeah, this is the number four, so we'll do it every year uh, in November. That's fabulous. I, I still you. don't understand tango. I don't think I can do it. I can't you have to dance. try. <laughs> it's very difficult, I think, but it's beautiful to watch. Yeah, everybody can try. It's, I wish, tango is for everybody. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And don't go away. We'll be right back with Saab Shimono. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm here with award-winning actor Saab Shimona, who was born and raised in Northern California and attended the University of Berkeley. He made his Broadway debut in the original cast of MAME with Angela Lansbury and was an original cast member in Sondheim's musical Pacific Overtures. He returned to Broadway in Pacific Overtures, The Revival, in 2005. Saab was a member of the Antaeus Company and enjoyed a collaboration of more than 25 years with writer-director Philip Gotando on the stage and in films. Um, I know you got the bug for acting when you were at Berkeley, and you were born in Sacramento, but something happened in between your family was taken away oh uh oh you're talking about the internment camp yes oh yeah well no i was taken away too you were taken away too <laughs> <laughs> it was when, when i was an infant uh, uh 41 uh and you were in sacramento and you were taken away we were taken away uh the whole family of uh seven i was uh three and uh my father had a restaurant, and my mother was working there, and uh, all that had to stop within uh, a few days, and packing up, and uh, the whole business was gone, yeah. And you had a twin brother? A twin brother. And, and yeah. is he an actor? No, he's a psychologist. Oh, yeah. he's a smart one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I think, <laughs> well, if he, actually, <laughs> it's interesting, he's, he, um, He's, he's, he became a professional student. He loves to study. Uh. Yeah, and I loved to study when I was younger. 
but somehow he uh, he didn't when he was younger. Oh, I see. So you reversed. Yeah, it. Are you identical twins? Yeah. That's what happens. I have identical twins too. One does one thing one time, and then the other one does it at a much later time or a different oh, time. Oh. It's kind of a funny thing. But what happened with you is you went back to Sacramento uh -huh. and carried on a normal life. Carried on a normal life, yeah. Uh, uh, for me, because I had there's no other barometer. There. So you did. I see. I uh, see. But, but I, I remember my mother uh, saying to me when we went into the first grade that uh, after the camp, uh -huh. after three years in camp, that uh, there will be um, it might be a little difficult for you, uh, the, you know, when you go back to school. And, uh, oh, because of being because of the uh, uh, Japanese, the war, and all that. And she says, uh, "Bear with it, and it'll go away." Good for her. Wh which was a good lesson. Yeah, it was a good preparation because uh, uh, I was ready. I wasn't ready for any uh, 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 dissension or anything like that. But just a preparation. But you know, in acting, you're rejected all the time too. So oh. it was a good. <laughs> it was a good preparation for you, probably the rest of your life. Yeah, pursue. Yeah. And, and and I think the most interesting thing is that here we are. You were on Broadway and Pacific Overtures, and then you went back after how many years? To to the revival. Oh oh. Uh, 76. Uh, oh, wow. A long time. It was 76? That was the original. So 20 years? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, 22 years. Yeah, and I played an older role. I mean, you, you played a different role, yeah, didn't you? <laughs> the first role was I played a young uh, optimist, uh, Manjiro, who, uh, well, yeah, then, then I played, then I became the boss. And then, <laughs> but before that, you were uh, in MAME. Maine. Ito. Yeah, that, that was my Ito. Place. Everyone loved Ito, right? Yeah, I think so. I love playing it. So yeah. how did you get the role? Well, uh, I uh, sang a song called, uh, um, what was it? Uh, from uh, My Fair Lady, um, uh, I'm Getting Married in the Morning. You yeah. did? Yeah. You yeah. just, when they said you're auditioning and you sang that song? Well, yeah. Uh, I studied with Stella Adler, and Stella Adler said, uh, and I did with a Cockney accent, uh, the uh, get... <laughs> But she said, no, 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 do, do it with a Japanese accent. I said, why? Because uh, I, I wanted to be, the, the reason why I studied with Stella is to become a, <laughs> a Shakespearean actor <laughs> without the accent. Right. I wanted, that's, you know, to break the uh, 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 stereo. Break the, yeah. yeah, and then here she told me to do it. So, so what'd you, how'd you sing it? Well, well, it's actually, but she put me in a kabuki mask because I didn't like that. Um, oh, she did? <laughs> I said, I don't want to do that. I said, okay, yeah. How did it go? Um. Oh. Oh. I get the married in the morning. <laughs> Ding dong, the bells are going to chime. Pull out the stopper. Let's have a whopper. Get me to the church on time. Oh, you're fabulous. <laughs> did you take dancing and singing? No, I... Uh, when I got <laughs> named, the, uh, Gene Sachs, the director, asked me, do I dance? I said, no, but I move well. <laughs> but your voice, did you ever take voice? I, I took voice lessons, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it's just too good, right? So when you're on Broadway, you have to know how to sing and dance. Well, uh, well actually, I didn't plan to be on Broadway in musicals. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I wanted to become, because uh, Stella Adler was a... Uh, Malin Brando and uh, actually exactly is that what yeah, you wanted to yeah, be? Yeah, I want to be a serious <laughs> uh, method actor, and uh, and so was actually my um, classmate was uh, Robert De Niro. Is that right? Yeah. Well, he couldn't sing and dance, could he? Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. But Maybe I, you could all do that when you're trained. I know. I, well, you know, there was a musical comedy class that, that we all uh, took. That we uh, most of us took. I see. But I I didn't I never planned to. Uh, do musicals. So. so did you stay in New York a long time? 15 years. Oh, you the, did. So were you on doing shows? Shows at, um, off-Broadway, uh, La Mama, uh, at the, you know, two years at La Mama. Oh, that's great training, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. And now you're in a role that was a, uh, a play written in the 50s, late 50s. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Leonard Spiegelglass, uh -huh. who wrote Silk Stockings and Gypsy, 
and you're in a in a the role of a majority of one. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. It's at the Pico Playhouse. It's the Pico Playhouse. Well, the irony of it is that uh, uh, when it was originally done, it was done by uh, Cedric Hardwick, and then the film was done by uh, uh, Alec Guinness. Your your role was that? Yeah. So is it, it an Englishman playing a Japanese yeah, businessman? It, well, the, the the interesting thing is the story is about bridging two cultures. Yes. And understanding two cultures and accepting it. And th in 1959, well, the story was good, but they weren't able or willing to find an Asian actor. Uh, see, is, this is 1959. That was very interesting because the problems that are being solved or being taught in a majority of one, I don't think we have those problems today. Do you? Uh, no, I don't think I don't, so. I mean, I don't see those where you're so mad at if you look at somebody and say, you're Japanese, I'm so mad at you, or you're Armenian, I'm so mad at you. Yeah, uh, the, the, um, yeah, but here, the story is about a white man falling in love with an Asian man, uh, a white woman falling in love with an uh, Asian man. The, in 1959, it, uh, it's not seeing those two. Right. Uh, on stage, in film, it was inconceivable to see actually an Asian man playing that part. So how did they change it? Did they rewrite it? Times change. That's why I'm. That's why doing you're doing play. it now. No, it is, uh, we have gone very far. Yeah. It's it's put on by the West Coast Jewish Theater. It's yeah. a production of theirs. Have you ever been in their productions mm, before? This is the first one. Well, they yeah. couldn't use a Jewish man for you, could they? <laughs> or they could have. They could have, you know. Uh, uh, but time has changed. How know. did you come into that? Uh, they just called me. And they. And uh, it's, it's interesting. I just did a play at uh, uh, O Globe called uh, 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 Pleasure of His Company. In San Diego? San Diego. And I got a call from an agent in New York. So would you like to do it? Said, oh, yes, yes, ah. yes. And then, then I looked at the script. But what? Well, well, where's my part? It was a houseboy. I said, no, no, no. Then I realized I mistook what play. I thought I was doing majority of one. Oh, I see. So I, then, then after, I, I said, okay, I never worked at O Globe, so I'll do it. And within two weeks, I got a call from uh, 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 for majority of one. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Just serendipitous. That Seren really yeah. was great. Yeah. Do you think there's a change in ethnic casting now? Could you play... Uh, a southern gentleman, do you think? Oh, no. 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 Uh, see, we're, we're getting a little better about casting Asians in Asian roles. But the problem sometimes is that uh, if it's a big Asian role, all of a sudden they become Eurasian. Oh, Eurasian? Yeah. Oh, so they have to mix? Your, yeah, so then they're safe to go. I see. So, I see. Uh, or but you, but you have done a lot of Asian roles because Gotanda does a lot of that, oh right? Yeah, yeah. And and how did you kind of collaborate with him for so many years? Um, does he live out here? No, he lives in San Francisco, or now in Berkeley. Uh, well, I suppose uh, he liked the way I work. So um, when there's a play or something, he I. I, I, I do think he has me in mind for a role or something. That's what I mean. Does he write for you? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, uh, in many ways, yeah. Uh -huh. And, and um, in film, do you prefer, f you've done a lot of film. Film, yeah. Do you prefer film or theater? I like both of them for their uh, different reasons. Uh, play, I, I, uh, the the response from the audience. Oh, do you hear it? Oh yeah, I feel it. Oh yeah, you feel it. I it? wonder because when I came out of the theater that night uh -huh. and I saw Paula Prentice afterwards, who's the woman who falls in love with you, right. she says, oh, I heard you laughing in the background. <laughs> and how did you hear me laughing? But she said, she said she heard it and she felt it. Oh yeah, if you know someone, or you don't know, but if you hear that certain laughs, uh, yeah, this, oh, that belongs to so and so. But you know someone's the responding energy, yeah, to you. Uh, that energy is there. Is part of your uh, the other partner. 
Oh. Whereas in film, it's I like film in that uh, you don't have to project; you just think it, uh, and uh, it seems more you can s yeah real and more immediate, and and the money's better in film. <laughs> <laughs> When we, when we, just before we leave, just because uh, this production was at the Pico Playhouse yes. and it's very local, um, who was in it with you? Paula Prentice. Yeah. Ross. Uh, oh, Ross Benjamin. Benjamin. Her son uh -huh. plays Her son. the son-in-law. Oh, I wish I had the list with me. And, and Shim, and then a couple of other, uh, Saab, uh -huh. Shimono. And a couple of other local actors. Lo yes, Addison. And they belong to the Jewish, um, the West Coast Jewish Theater, I guess. Uh, I think most most of the actors uh, have been asked to participate. I don't I don't know whether there is a company. Oh, I, I, I'm, I, not, I'm I, not sure. Uh, I see, I see. There might be patrons, but uh, I that see. that I don't know. I see. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So, uh, are you still singing and dancing? Do you do you work uh, out in that? Well, I, I break out and sing uh, <laughs> uh, as a prep for uh, uh, for my shows, uh, even theater work you know, or whatever. Because I don't know about singing; it just makes you feel good, brings the oxygen and the energy. Do you work yeah. out to keep in oh, yeah. shape? Yeah. I, what do you do? Um, I go to the gym at least. Uh, try to go faithfully once a day. Once uh, a day. Oh, I'm sorry. Once, uh, every, once day, day every day, good. every day, every <laughs> day, once a day, every day. <laughs> That's good. That's very good. Uh, and, and, and I just only do one or two uh, That's all exercise, I and then I uh, then do uh, stretching and the cycling. Good for you. But it's just yeah, I, I faithfully try to do it every day. And we have to keep ourselves doing that. Yeah. Saab, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. And thanks. Keep writing. Email me, jaquinn1 at aol.com and 777 South Figueroa, LA 90017. Bye. See you next time. <laughs>